Spitfire Audio is based in Tarnyard Studios, the home to about 80 recording studios. And I, I often refer to it as that it's almost like a bit of a, a music mine where you've got different kind of shifts coming in. So you have your, your, your media composers working during the day and then gathering for a, a wine with an H in the, in the cafe stroke bar at about six o'clock when you've got your track makers, your beat makers and your top liners coming in to do their shifts. But what's been great about this community is to make friends with people not only in the media music business, but the other side of the tracks, making tracks. And this guy is a serious talent. Tom Fuller is going to show us around and talk about the subtle differences between making tracks and making music for media. Hello, Hello mate. Thanks Hello, so mate. much for giving us My some pleasure. time. Come on in. I remember when I first looked at um, studios uh, in, in Taliard, I remember coming in here and going, this looks like a fucking spaceship. It's so good. It is. It's I'm going to tease bit... them with it. Should we look at your, oh, your, your, your booth first? Come in, look at the booth. So this is a, a shared booth? Yeah, it's a shared booth actually with the guys next door. Yeah, they haven't, they haven't been in for a while actually, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of uh, a nice little communal space that we have. Fantastic. What yeah. a lovely, wonderful looking piano. And obviously uh, this is a, a big part of what you do, vocals. Yes, lots of vocals. So um, lots of uh, sound baffling, trying to get it sounding good. But yeah, nice nice vocal mics, cheap one, expensive one. So this is a, an M149, yes. which is, I mean, it's yeah. a great all rounder, isn't it? That? It's it good, yeah. On, on male and female quite well. It's good, yeah. It's a little bright sometimes, but it's a really nice mic, I think. Uh, yeah, just kind of would like a, Probably need to get a 67 soon, don't we? That's probably what needs to oh, come next. One. I bet you do, <laughs> don't you? Ooh. Well, no, I borrowed one and then dropped it. So I had oh, to no. take it. It's got, got a massive dink in it, so I had to take it. So not only Ooh. do I have a 67 that I didn't want, it's got a massive dink in well, it. Well, it's worthless now. I'll buy it from you for little <laughs> so to no this, money. Now, these are interesting. I find these incredibly noisy. I, do yes, you? Um, you can buy a clever little thing called a cloud lifter, which is over here, actually, oh, that's um, good which you can uh, plug into, and then it provides lots of clean gain. So, uh, yeah, it makes it a lot less noisy. Um, and then use it with a nice clean pre. Um, but yeah, it's great. This sounds great on loads of decent vocals. So I always have it up. And this um, is a kind of a, ref a for, to, for reflections, basically. These, yeah, these, yeah, it's to stop the, the reflections behind the mic. My dad actually built these. He did a great job, actually. So um, yeah, shout Fantastic. out to my father. Uh, and I see some backline. Is this predominantly for, for reamping? Yeah, and for guitars and whatever keys as well. Yeah, so this, is, this one's in my reamp chain at the moment, actually. Um, so I can fire drums and vocals through it um, and a nice little Audio Technica ribbon mic on that actually at the moment. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to pretend not to know the answer to this, but um, why <coughs> don't you simply use amp simulators? In, in, they in don't the sound very good, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> why? I know. Why is that? I don't know. I have no idea They've why. They've never cracked it. I know. They? It's weird. Also, I think there's something about air moving and there's also, um, I mean, I say that I'm a hypocrite because one of my amps is actually has no speaker. It's going through a simulator like the Palmer one. Okay. So that sounds really good as well. So I don't know why. It must be something to do with electricity. But also there's spring reverbs in these things as well. So it's quite easy to just go and bit of spring. So yeah, it's Fantastic. pretty good. Right. Let's have a look at the spaceship. Yeah. Come on in. It's quite it's small, but perfectly formed. And gorgeous. Well, oh, got, I like I like a man who likes a bit of taxidermy. I, oh, my God. wife won't allow it in the house, so I've oh. got I've got a, I've got an, an old 1950s mink and an old fox in my my studio. <laughs> I'm, I was thinking about getting rid of them actually, but no, I, I can't bring myself to do it. They were a gift actually. So I'm, I'm is it problematic? Because I reckon there's a higher concentration of vegans in the music industry. I know is that probably. Problematic? So is this the amp thing that you were talking about? No. Uh, no, that's another amp. That's a 19. I think that's a 1961 Selma True Voice. That's amazing. It's like I think it's two watts. Actually, Where did that. you find that? That was at a guitar auction in Bath, that one. It's very good, so I put drums through that. It sounds very good. Um, okay. I also got the um, audio kitchen on a, on a loop, actually, which is nice. And I've got this old Wem. This is 1963 Wem West, West, Westminster, I think this, uh, which has got <coughs> a great valve trem on that as well, actually. That's my main playing guitar when I'm writing. Fantastic. How are you finding those Suntronics mics? Great. Oh, my God, they're fantastic. So Trevor, Trevor bought that down, and it just stayed. I'm actually going to get a few more, um, but yeah, I think it's an amazing mic. I use the Apollo for drum overheads as well, actually, because I, I can squeeze drums in the, in I the booth. I love the Apollo. So. It's great. Yeah, it's very good. So I often get the sense when I walk into a studio and see a lot of outboard of whether it gets used or not. And I get the sense that you use your outboard. Are you a fan? Yeah, I am a fan, yes. I try and use it um, for fun things. I don't like outboard that doesn't do anything. I don't, you know, 
kind of boring compressors that you can't really hear are not my vibe. I need to really hear it because otherwise it's money wasted, really, isn't it? Because you could probably use a plugin. So right, I've only got things that really make a difference. Colourful, yeah. So you know, dynamites and things that make drums sound like they're exploding. They're pretty old. They sound amazing on kick and snare. They just make make drums just really explode. And then the TG one is just a classic studio staple. Um, I've got one of those, modes. but I've never, I've never used it. You need to use it, Christian. You need what to do use you what, what, what shall I use it on? Well, they're great on drums. They, I mean, traditionally you'd use them on room mics. Um, so, but it depends if you're not doing any kind of live drums. You could use them on. Um, I use them on like electronic parallel drums actually. Okay. But also, you could use it on piano. Sounds great on piano Fantastic. actually. I'll have to try that. Try it in limit mode. Because it's basically from in limit mode. Yeah, okay. comp mode's just a bit kind of you know. Okay. Um, limit mode is a bit more of a smash, is it? Yeah, but it's kind of very, it's very kind of easy going though. You, you don't have to use it so the needle's moving too much, but then it sounds great if, if it is as well. So it depends what you want. Brilliant. But also release, got to be quick. So. Okay, thanks for the tip. Yeah. Now these Marg, um, I've, they're new to me. I've just got a pair of these, and oh, I was great. really impressed with. Is it the, they have an air thing? Yeah, great the strings great. and stuff. Yeah, so I use mine on uh, on drums actually. So okay. um, do you know Chenzo Townsend? He's a, I do. Yes, he's a really good mixer. So he um, put me on to those, I think, and he. Um, uh, so he used them, I think he used them on his drum bus, I don't know, but and then I um, actually post posted on, Inst on Instagram and I was talking about the sub band because the sub is uh, is really quite brutal, actually, it's okay. amazing. Um, and and I, I, I said to him, uh, it's, uh, it's it's quite a lot, and he said, yeah, I've been getting into trouble with mastering engineers, <laughs> so I've <laughs> got to be careful with that, okay. I don't want to break any speakers. Or, um, but yeah, no, they're amazing on drums, actually. And also, the, so the air band is amazing on cymbals, and, but I only use on drums, I don't put any um, any music through it, any kind of like keys no. or... Okay. Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah, so it's just for a little bit of finishing, really. And also just losing a little bit like the kind of cloudy lower mids on that as well. The Culture Vulture is an extraordinary piece of kit, isn't it? Yes, yeah, my bulb's gone. I was very upset, actually. Just oh, the you lovely came. green bulb, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm lamenting. But, um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's great. I use it for um, mainly bass. Um, sometimes I track straight into it because it's got a, a fun little input on it. Um, yeah, it just so makes things... So is that things... to make kind of bass audible? Yeah, it's to, to, I mean, it just, it adds up a harmonics. So you can just, it makes stuff come through on a small speaker, but also it's just, you know, it's a good breakup, actually. I tend to use it in the mode, I think no one likes the mode I use it in, I think. I mean, was it P1? I think everyone oh, yeah. uses it in T, don't they? Yeah. I think, for triode, right? And I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I like, I like that one. I like P. Is uh, the, uh, you know, making stuff for small speakers an even more important thing these days? Because I see, I'm going to sound like an old fart here, but I do see a lot of young people listening to music out of the speakers of their phone. Yeah, I mean, the phone is a good, a good speaker to check on because, you know, they're, I think they're, um, they're tuned to voices, aren't they? So there's lots of like, oh. there's like a 1K or 1.5K boost maybe, I don't know, maybe some 4K going on. So you can you can work out where your vocal's sitting in a mix actually, in your snare. Um, so it's important, yeah. I mean, if you can hear a bass on a phone, then you're doing very well, aren't you? So Great. Um, I think, yeah, things like the Culture Vulture really help with that. Um, so, and yeah. I'm delighted to see a fellow Dimension D I know. User. I've got that actually on permalone from John Kelly at the moment. <laughs> next door. I hope he doesn't see this video. Is it your stereoizer basically? Yeah, for, it for is. Mono, yeah. mono synths and stuff. Yeah, it is. So I only use I use it the mono input way, which I know is um, I don't know if that's cool or not. I don't know. Most people use it in stereo, I think. But I I do one in and two out. Yes. Actually, which is annoying because I use it as a Pro Tools insert. So I have one channel of DA going nowhere, just into the ether, just so I can use that it as an insert. That troubles your. Oh, it does. Yeah, it's <laughs> annoying, isn't it? You know, you've got to make them count. So um, yeah, so it's great. I, I put like Junos through it because the Juno, the chorus on my Juno is noisy, like very, very noisy. Right. So I use this instead. Um, but it's great on BVs as well, um, strings if I want them to sound a bit weird. Also, um, BV. Uh, also, yeah, uh, reverb returns. So. Oh. So sometimes I take the PCM80 and just chuck that over the... Uh, oh, how interesting. Yeah, it's pretty fun, actually, if you're doing something oh, synthy. try that. Great on effects. Great. I, I love something you just can't tinker with. It's just, I know. It's, it just, it's a good chorus. They've worked out what sounds good. And I don't know what buttons to use. I keep asking people what there combinations. Are com there are combinations, aren't there? I know, I well, thought supposedly. there were only three, four settings, but yeah. Well, so yeah, I just, every now and again, I just change it and see if I can hear the difference. And usually, no, I don't know. <laughs> I know number four is... is um, Better supposedly. I don't know. Well, more audible. Brilliant. So, so yeah. Should we move around here? So yes. uh, I've got the MS20. Do you use the filters in that as well as the? Yeah, yeah. So I, I use it all the time for bass, um, and then I run things through it. So it's actually I've got it set up on an aux on my board, so I can fire anything I'm hearing to it. 
um, which is quite fun. So I put, use it a lot for drums. Brilliant. Because the filters are amazing, obviously. But also, you can, can if you use the electronic signal processor, you can control the CV from, you know, it derives uh, CV from the input signals, which is quite good. So you can kind of do some fun kind of with with the tom hits and things, quite fun. So. Oh, great. Yeah, it's very good. Um, and then also, I've got the dope for which I can plug into it if I can be bothered, which is quite fun. Drum Brute? Yeah, this is another Archeria number. It's good, actually. This is kind of it's quite fun, isn't it? That's true, the MS-20, actually. It doesn't normally sound like that. It normally sounds more like this. Uh, oh. It's quite good. Oh, I'm going to start using my MS-20. So what are you I doing know. with the MS-20? So I'm just sending... Oh, I'm stopping over here. Basically, just off an aux, just sending through the filter. Let's so I can just go, like... If I just do... Oh, I've lost it now. I've lost it. I've broken it. Where is it? There it is. So, yeah. And then you can do like. Sounds pretty good actually. And you can get the kick to really. Oh, can you show me where you where you patch in the, the filter? Because I want to go ahead and do this immediately. Oh, you do. <laughs> just go. Well, so you patch into that, obviously, into the signal in. Let me turn that down. You, you patch into the signal in. Okay. And then you. Um, come out of there and then go in, into here, into where it says uh, external signal in. But then if you want to use, and you, this is like pre these filters here though. So if you want to then take the CV that it's generated, you can then trigger the oscillators by going into these up here. So, oh, wow. So, but I mean, if you just want to access the filters, you can actually just go straight into there. You don't need to go right here, but it's fun to have the, the level signal. Oh, yeah. So it sounds pretty good. I mean, it makes that sound huge. So, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Um, so yeah, it's great actually. That's it's, it's really good. So it's it's kind of like a a modular vibe actually because they're all like individual little modules I think. And yeah, I don't know. It's quite good. I've been using it for quite a lot of little things, and it's got a, a step thing. So it's got some fun kind of. When you use that, you're like, I'm never going to use that, and then you end up using it. <laughs> you know, it's quite fun, isn't it? You're a fan of the Juno. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's the first synth I bought, actually. It's, it's been an old, it's old. old and no MIDI? No MIDI, no. Use a lot of syncing from other things, though. So I can sync the ARP and I can sync the LFO. Everything's all connected. So, um, and this little this little bad boy is um, hooked up to Pro Tools. So um, it's, yeah, this is, I think it's got, oh, it's not unplugged at the moment, but it's got a, a digital LFO, so I can plumb that into, wow. into there. Yep. And this very much looks like a, a kind of a functional, Thing for songwriting. I yeah, think. just MIDI controller, you know. This is where all my Spitfire gets played from, all my Spitfire oh, songs. There we go. Yeah. That's so, good yeah. Old school compressors for tracking vocals. This is a kind of an industry standard for vocals, is it? Not? Yeah, both of them really. I mean, sometimes you use one into the other. You can use the, um, because the LA2A, if it gets a big peak, it can, the recovery time's quite slow. So okay. you can actually use the, the URI on, on before it in the okay. chain, because then you can catch the peaks and then stop the, the LA2A hitting as hard right so you could use it on like 8 to 1 or 12 to 1 but carefully you know and then fantastic good chain and um do you use the ad converter on this i do yeah i do okay. i use it to, with that? To, um well i actually use it to print my mixes through um oh, so interesting. I've, I've because it's got an insert point so you can pat you can just use i use the pre's for like piano and then i can just patch my mix into it but i've got some other converters as well so i can i've actually got this is really boring but i've got um i've got it tweaked to have more headroom so I've got two sets of converters, and if I want to print my mix hotter um, or like drive things harder, I can then use that on the way in, and it knocks I think six dBs or four dBs off the top. So okay, interesting. It means I can crank the mix bus harder. Fantastic. So, so what is your preferred mic pre? Uh, I, I love this Heritage Audio up here. Actually, it's like a copy of a Neve. Um, it sounds. I was at Real World actually, and we had a bunch of vintage Neves up, and this was the only one that sounded remotely similar. The EQ is great. And these um, VP28s here as well are really good. Uh, they're like classic APIs, and the, the, the trim pots at the bottom are actually small faders. They're not just uh, attenuators. So there's lots of op amps in there. It sounds good. It sounds really right. good. They just sound like really good APIs. Um, and the Cartec ones are fun as well. They've got like little kind of solid state Poltec EQs on. What else have I got? I don't know. That's mainly it. This is amazing, actually. This is a, a really crunchy. Uh, crunchy compressor and distortion box. It's amazing, actually. It just brings vocals right to the front. Um, famously used, I think, what by... This? No, yeah. this, this, that's the part. No, no, <laughs> this say, this little one here, it's called a level lock. It's like, I think it's a copy of the old um, uh, level lock. You know, have you used devil lock? 
no. in the box. It's a Sound Toys plugin. I think it's like the hardware version of that, effectively. But it sounds great. Um, I think it was used for like Matt Bellamy's vocal on Muse, that kind of vibe. Okay. So it's like very like. But Brilliant. It's very good. Yeah, fun things. Fun thing. Yeah. And what's the thing in the in the in the? Is That's a, a spring, a spring reverb. Oh that. right. Very good re reverb. They're actually quite rare. Those I think now. It's a Clark Technic one, so it doesn't look very cool, but it sounds amazing. Um, and I have the left channel um, slightly brighter than the right, and then I, it kind of does a little bit of that going on. So, and then I can modulate it with a dimd if I need. Great. And it's pretty good. It's great on like synths, Genos, and things that sometimes on vocals. And I've got others. I love spring reverb, so I've got this one as well, which is phenomenal. This. I don't know if I can. Is it Canas? Yes. My my brother Joe has. Uh, oh yeah, Canass, right. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I I just have it going. Love to hear it. Well, normally what I get is the the noise of the Moog light, the backlight going in in it. <laughs> so when I when I dim the lights, it goes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's just normally I don't know what's going on at the moment. There's some crazy. Crazy modulation, but yeah, I was probably running a synth or something through, and then just hard panning it. Um, and then I've got um, so that's actually on an aux as well, so I can do that on the way in, so I can take any synth and that at the same time. And then I've got this actually, which is um, I had one of these before, but it oh, broke. Beautiful. So I'm, I've just got this new one, but it's not been converted to, or it's not had a UK plug on it yet, so unfortunately it's not in yet. But it's an old Valve Spring Reverb, which is amazing for vocals. It's actually stereo, but if you go it doesn't have a wet only out, so if you go in the left side and then come out the right side, you can get a kind of DIY wet only, which is quite good for vocals. So that's going to be my main mono vocal reverb. Which Your main re mono reverb? My main vocal mono mono reverb, yeah. Right. Yeah, so why spring? It sounds amazing. I don't know. It sounds great for mono. I, you know, I've got other reverbs, though, but for mono, that's, that's what I use. Uh, otherwise, I use this awful Zoom twelve O two, which is like probably the worst reverb ever made but also sounds amazing on snare drums and shit vocals as a mono yeah sometimes yeah yeah usually as mono actually that the snare sometimes i use stereo but but that's a stereo that's a mono in stereo out as well that so and then i use loads of um of uh these as well like effects pedals and i've got a spring reverb in the effects chain over here as well actually which i use all the time it's amazing it's called a soulmate which is really good so that's in a reamp chain as well so i can fire stuff out through that wow um so yeah it's pretty good actually but spring reverbs are just amazing on most things because you know, and like putting synths through amps, especially soft synths, is a way to just remove all the top end and the bottom ends and just go <laughs> slot it in a mix. You know, so you're not fighting with EQ. And yeah, a lot of these um, the problems I have with a lot of soft synths is the amount of bandwidth they operate. It's yeah. just the whole the whole lot. Yeah, and like, and like the, the width as well. Like, yeah. you know the panning. So if you like put it through an amp, instantly you've monoed it. So yeah. okay, now you can pan it somewhere. And secondly, you've taken all the top and the bottom off. So, well, a lot of the bottom off, but you can you can EQ it with a 560 or something, and it just like you know you can instantly see where it's going, and you can slot kind of, it in. Yeah, and then if you want to make it stereo, you just either slam a dim D on it, or you pan it, send it to a reverb, and pan out the other side, and then suddenly it's like, ah, oh, okay, I get it now, you know. Rather than like, oh, where does it, you know, where does it live? And then I've got another one. Where does that live? You know. And it's yeah, and you fall in love with the, the grandiosity of it. Don't I you? know, and it's a, it's a dangerous game because then you get to the end of your mix and you just got it full of big things, and then suddenly <laughs> nothing sounds big, and it's just annoying, you know. And it's ah. So yeah, I don't know. It's good to make things small and shit, and then make try and make them bigger afterwards. I think is a good ethos. Oh yeah, and this is amazing. I've got to tell you about this. This is a. Um, uh, a 19, I think it's 1950s tape delay. This is like the Ooh. Beatles. It's got a valve just for the meter. Look at that. Oh. It's got a, a magic eye meter. Sounds good. Can you hear that purring? Oh, it does purr. It's like a cat. I know, it's very good. It's very good. Anyway, yeah, that's um, that's very good. It's tape delay, and I've got my copycat, trusted copycat down here, which, oh, can't get, which is um, wet only. This is amazing. I've never heard one sound as good as this. So, um, yeah, that's on my uh, That won't be going on eBay soon. Oh no, no! I actually bought that from an assistant um, who used to work for a very, a huge mixer. And uh, the day after I bought it, he called me and offered to buy it back for twice the price. And I said no because I'd already used it and I heard how good it sounded. Wow. And I used to own two other ones actually, and this one sounds better. So, because these these things are kind of cottage industry, aren't they? So they all they all yeah. have their own characteristics. Yeah, and on vocals, I mean that's my main vocal delay if I'm doing anything that's kind of slappy. So right. Slap and you just time it manually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get it roughly in the right place, and then I move it around in Pro Tools. Yeah, because you know, you know, it's not, it's not tweaky, is it? Really, you can, it's, it is what it is, and it does what it does. Great. So, um, and then this, um, this is great as well. It's a bit more tweakable. That, 
Although this wasn't until very recently, it didn't. It wasn't wet only. Actually, I, I found I was opening it up, giving it a clean over the weekend, and I found a little pot inside. Look, I thought, oh, what does that do? And I tweaked it, and then suddenly it's wet only. I didn't there even know. Go. So I'm very happy about that, Christian. Excellent. I know. Got the graphic on the headphone mix. That's how old school I am. So uh, if they complain about, if they start singing flat, this is a good tip, Christian. If you're doing vocals, I don't know if you know this. If um, they sing flat, they've got too much bass in the headphones, so I use that to knock it off, and usually they just come back in tune. Because of the way the brain perceives bass, right, it changes your internal pitch. So this is your work position, which is in the corner, and which is unusual for me, because as media composers, we like to sit in the centre with a big old screen, blocking our tweeters. Basically, coming up through big studios, I think um, everyone's always off, because obviously the computer's always off to the side of the desk, right? So, so Historically, where the computer went was where the tape hop was. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a tape-op in my own room, which is <laughs> what's going on here, I think. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's just I find it quite comfortable to be here. And I've got my little stereo, which I do a lot of work on. And I kind of... That, what, that? Yes, it's, it's my little... Uh, it's a pure evoke. It's very good. A lot of mixers use it. It's very good. You really? Can, yeah, it's really good for, like, levelling snares and, and vocals. Um, and also getting basses to kind of come through on small speakers is, like, the holy grail of, of decent mixers. So, um, yeah, it's really good for that. But, yeah, it's great because I can work here. Then if I need to check, it doesn't sound shit. I can just kind of come to the middle of the room and then check on the other monitors and then come back. And you have two different kind of near fields. So you've got the vocals and... Yeah, and the Amphions. I'm loving these Amphions, actually. They're, they're quite new um, to me. I think they've been around a few years now. They're really good. They're very, um, very hi-fi, transparent. I originally got them to replace NS10s because I kept blowing the tweeters. And the Amphions, you can't crank loads if you're working with a band or working with an artist and you really want to crank, or you, like, you've got a Moog plugged in. Mm -hmm. The Moog is like the surefire way to blow any speaker across the room. If it's really? Small. Oh my god! Yeah, you just hit. A, I've got. I've got like a an EQ across my mix bus, filtering at like forty hertz. Because as soon as someone grabs something and I'm not looking, drivers start firing across the room. <laughs> so it's it's quite quite a lot. So yeah, I've got to be careful with the Amphions, but um, the, the vocals can take it. So they're here for turning up. I saw on your Instagram account that you've recently done a, a, a rewire. Oh yes. Is it a, a new system or? It's What's a new workflow, I think. Okay. I realised I was being too slow. I create sounds and I kind of mix as I go, but I realised that um, none of my mixes were recordable because I was just doing monitor mixes effectively and then giving the mixes to other people. But then I was getting my rough mixes used a lot and then the labels would be calling me asking for stems and asking for revisions. And I just, you know, it was a job to try and get a mix back. But effectively, it was just wow. an end of day mix from... You know, Board mix, yeah. Yeah, well, like from two months ago. And I can't remember what the hell I'd done. Um, and they had a vibe, um, and actually uh, an artist I was working with quite recently just messaged me and he was just like quite frustrated actually because we had this mix and it was amazing and it had gone off to LA and it had been mixed by, you know, big, big mixer. Concho. Yeah, and it, and it, um, and it they were just like, it, just, it, it sounds, the drums sound better, we like certain things in your mix better, obviously the vocals, it's, it's, has, it's had some time on it, so there were some yeah. good, good things in the new mix. But you know, just trying to get those things back, and just my mixes weren't recordable, and he's just, he's just like, "Aren't you frustrated?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm frustrated, okay. really frustrated." So um, I was like, "Right, ripping the whole room out." I was obviously I've been planning it for probably probably a year, but I just haven't had a week to just do it. And I thought it was going to take three days, and it took no. ten days. No, so. sweetie, no, I really. no. <laughs> God. So, did did you do it yourself or? Yes, I did. Yeah, and um, a, a guy called Brendan Cox helped me. And oh, he's right, a lovely yes, man, yes, and he spent a lot legend. of time, yeah. a lot of time on his back under the desk with me, plugging things in. It doesn't look like there's much wiring in here, but there's, there's, you can kind of do that around the wiring. There's a trunk that runs all right. along. The, so yeah, it's a lot. You don't want to see under there. I've hidden it because I knew okay. you were coming. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, but it's good. So basically, what, what it lets me do is it splits the room into kind of two halves. So the board is just kind of inputs actually. So you can kind of grab anything and, and like play and it's always coming in onto the board and even before Pro Tools. So I can always hear stuff without arming tracks. Okay. Which is great because, you know, if you're with an artist in the room, you know, you get someone they're like, is this on? And the answer is yes now. Yeah. Whereas before it was like, oh no, I need to arm a track and, you know. Yeah. So now it's good for creativity. Um, and did, did you find that when it was a bit of a, a hassle, you'd sometimes be, if you were working under pressure, sometimes less inclined to use the outboard? Oh, all the time, yeah. Like Which is the... a pity, is it not? Because the, yeah. the outboard is, is what I think creates something unique, potentially. Yeah, I mean, I mean, outboard's like, it's cool. It's like a bit boring if you're like, if you're talking about mixing, I guess. It's cool, it makes stuff sound good. That's its job, right? That's, yeah. So I like using it. Half the stuff wasn't plugged in for a year because, you know, I'd have to patch it and I've only got so many channels and I was returning on the board. So now I'm summing in the box, effectively. I've got my mix bus on the board, actually. But um, 
but yeah, that outboard's all on hardware inserts now. So okay. um, for mixing, um, although I've done a clever thing where I can um, my first eight hardware inserts come up on the patch bay, um, so I can like the URI and the, the LATA, I can actually patch into those for tracking as well. So, okay. so say you wanted to record, a, like, I don't know, the drum machine through the URI, I just go boom, and then suddenly it's on the way in, pulled out of the hardware insert chain, yank the cords, and suddenly it's back in whatever was going on. Okay. So it's quite good for that. Yeah, and it's great if you've got other people in the room as well. So, you know, because otherwise you're just reliant, they're reliant on you sat here doing this rather than going, oh, I just want to do that. And then, yeah. you know. So you're in Pro Tools. Yep. And do you program in Pro Tools? Yes, I have to. Yeah, I can't go to Logic and come back. It's too much. I haven't, oh, got, no. to, I haven't got time. So I just. But, so I are start. you using MIDI or are you just mainly programming audio? Uh, so what I do is I, I mainly, yeah, I normally just play everything and capture it. If I use MIDI, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll probably. Normally, I'll use MIDI for like controlling filters. Like I've got the, the Bisqui over here, which I use all the time. Mm -hmm. And I've actually got I've got the I've got the the um, controller the controls coming out to a separate controller actually, so I can sit here and, and pluck, muck about with it. Okay. So I use MIDI for things like that. Um, a lot of the synths don't have MIDI. The Juno doesn't have MIDI in here. So, so you're you're physically pl playing most of the stuff in, and then then aligning to grid and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then if I want to program something with MIDI, then I'll use this as my main controller or the digital piano behind you. And then um, like if I'm doing some orchestral stuff, obviously you've got to, you've got to because you need to be tweaking notes and stuff. Right. So um, yeah, so I'll do that if I have to. Yeah, I do drum programming. I tend to use um, I use like an 808 style programmer, or I'll just play it live. So, because I'm all about the groove, actually. So, right. I don't like things to be too gridded, um, unless I want it to sound completely on the grid, like it's some kind of, you know, or like or with some swing or something like an MPC mm. style thing. I'm committing all the time. Part of the hardware insert thing is, as soon as I'm happy with something, I just commit that insert now, which is amazing for me. My workflow has changed drastically. Because, really? Yeah, because now before I was I couldn't save anything. You know, now I I get a sound, I like it. The mix is pretty good. If I think they're gonna go for it like highlight those tracks, commit, just as one real time pass, and then all of that stuff's stored in yep. the in the session and I can effectively yank my laptop and go away with it. And this is another massive thing. I'm now on a laptop as well, so I'm completely portable. One cable goes in and lights the whole studio up. And then at the end of the day I unplug that cable, take it away, and it's exactly how it was. Oh, so that so that is actually your computer? Yeah. Yeah. The whole studio is running from a brand new MacBook. And wow. one cable into it. I was adamant I wanted one cable coming out of it because before it was an absolute shitstorm of, of stuff going on. That's insane. And it goes through this big box of I.O. that lives under there and, and there's all sorts going on to it. But yeah, it's effectively one cable. And if I print the commit the hardware inserts, I can just leave the room and it will sound exactly the same and I can print the stems wherever I am. So it's a big deal for me, actually. That's that That's incredibly yeah. convenient. For us media composers sitting on this side of the fence, we are under the possible illusion that there's no money in your side of the business at the moment, but you've clearly made a profession out of it. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. I think there's less money, for sure. I mean, yes. you know, I think there's people doing incredibly well. I think there's people doing less well. I think this, it's always hard, I think. But I think it's hard for anyone in any industry when you're not at the top of it, I, I think. You know, it should be the same in, in, com in composing as well. There's budgets that just aren't what they were, right? I think right. is, is just the kind of takeaway from this, I think. But part of me changing my workflow is I want to be, able, I used to just give mixes to other people and and now I want to try and keep that in house. You know, I get to retain the control over it and also, you know, effectively I get to bill for that too. It's, you've got to be more cutthroat with your kind of workflow and your approach. Otherwise I think, like, you know, you're going to go under, I think that's just genu genuinely how it is. This is why it's important to write. It's yes. important, you know, PRS is a big deal. You know now, I think. Yeah. You know, obviously, that's if you're a composer, that's huge. Yes, you know? it's everything. Um, so you know, it's but it's a big deal to me too, and it's a big deal to a lot of you know people who are producers are also writers and yes. just having a finger in many pies. You know, do library stuff, do sync stuff, do you know, do collaborations with other people in other industries, and I think. Mm -hmm. You can kind of also keep it interesting, right? Because you don't want to yes. do the same thing all the time. So, right? have you done much library work? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. I enjoy it. And you've been professional now for? Uh, I don't know now. I'm getting old. I'm no, you're not. I think maybe twelve years. I twelve years. Know. So, if you could say one thing to you, you the, the the producer, writer, composer that is you now, could say something to you twelve years ago, what would that be? Uh, Eat less takeaways, be more healthy, drink less. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good advice. I always say that you are the CEO of the business that is you, yeah. and it's therefore important that it's scalable and sustainable. Yeah, hugely. 
Oh my God, I, I mean, yeah, hugely, I think. Do you think getting out is important? Or do, do, are you a bit of a troglodyte? I mean, yeah, getting out is really important. I, I'm, I started swimming every day, I think I told you this already, and yeah. I, it's changed my, my life. I've like started losing weight. I was getting, you know, you come into the studio every day and it feels like a bit of a prison and, you know, you're eating badly and, you know, drinking and then you're not getting any exercise. So I decided that I needed to, 12 o'clock every day, I go down and I swim 70 lengths and then I come back. And yeah. as long as I'm not working with someone new or uh, someone who can't, you know, is no, has no flexibility at all, then mm. I will do that. Sometimes the artist I'm working with, the artist I'm working with will come with me. So, okay. you know, it's quite fun, actually. That's a good icebreaker. I know, right? Let's, let's, let's get, get into it. Let's, let's go get... for a steam. It's really European, isn't it? I like it. <laughs> Tom, listen, thanks so much for your time. Yep. Brilliant. Excellent. Thanks for coming.